Hi folks, welcome to another Cash Cloud video. As usual, before we get on with today's one, uh, I want to say a massive thank you to my channel members. They are Shane Cook, Darren Lynch, Aina Lund, Matthew Reynolds, Tess Boaz, and this person here. Thank you ever so much to all of you. If this person can get in touch with me to let me know how to pronounce your name correctly, I would really appreciate that. Um, if you want to join those guys and get perks like these videos 24 hours early, uh, entries into monthly giveaways and more, just check out the join button below and see what options are available. But yeah, let's crack on with today's video. Um, I want to say, first of all, thank you to um, a Facebook um, member called Davey Big Fella Walton. Um, you reminded me about something that I thought about a long time ago and I just completely forgot about it. And then you posted not too long ago about this thing and it sort of made me go, right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to give it a go. And that is, well, to be honest, you won't understand just from the picture. This, this even, this is flexible neon strip light. Um, specifically, this is uh, it's ice blue was the official color for it. Um, now what it is, um, again, some of you may have seen this post that me and Davey uh, were going back and forth with. Um, the panoramic sunroof in the Qashqai, which I don't, I don't think all models have, I'm not sure, someone can correct me on that. Um, some cars with a panoramic sunroof have really nice ambient lighting along the side of it. And I want to try and do the same thing. And like I say, thank you to uh, Davey, you gave me the idea. Um, so I've cracked on and made a couple of Amazon purchases. Um, now, the thing is, you can get the strip lights like we put in the footwells and the same sort of thing that we had, uh, we've had we got underneath the car as the welcome lighting. The problem with that is that is individual LED spotlights. So if we had that as ambient lighting, it would look a bit strange. It would just be like little spotlights, especially with the reflection that the glass will give at night time. Excuse me. So I needed to find something that was just smooth, which is how I came across this stuff here. Um, it says, uh, I believe it's silica it's made of. Um, let me open it up now. Um, and what it is, is a, it's five meters long and it comes with no kind of adhesive strip on it, which is why I bought this stuff too. This is a reel of um, basically like 3M tape, but a bit more solid. So that's that. Again, there'll be links to both of these because they're both from Amazon. There'll be links in the description. So we've got this big long snail of lighting. Uh, and on the end of it is actually a DC plug. Now, it does say in the instructions and the wiring that you can cut it if you wish, um, which is what we're going to do. Uh, there's a few things I need to find out and double check with first. We need to work out where we're gonna get our power from because we want this lighting to be on all the time. Um, it's not gonna be like um, our footwells and our interior lights that come on when you unlock the car and you know, open the door. We want this on all the time. So we're going to have to find a power point that is on all the time, but we don't want it to be on all the time when the car is locked, because obviously we're going to need to power battery. Um, so that's going to be the first thing I need to do once I've cut this end off, which is the big moment. Um, all there is inside, you can kind of just make out in there. There is a single red and a single black wire, so it's pretty simple, positive and negative. Uh, also, this is uh, cuttable, is that the word? Trimmable. Um, well, apparently these black marks that you can see they are cutting points. Uh, again, the instructions are pretty good, to be honest, for something that's quite cheap and is definitely not from England. The instructions are pretty good, so it tells you exactly where to cut. You can see it says on these black black lines, they're what, two and a half centimetres apart. And then once you have cut it, you need to cut a little bit of excess off and you will have contact, the point that you can uh, wire, new bits of wire on, which is again something we're going to have to do. So it's going to be a bit in depth. Uh, it's going to require a soldering iron, obviously, to put the new wiring on. Um, it's going to require a little bit of disassembly in the car, the roof lining, um, and stuff like that. So it's going to be a bit of a long video, I think. Um, probably a lot of fast-forwarded moments of me taking bits out and putting shoving wire through the headliner and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, so the first thing I'm going to do now, I won't bore you with it, I'm now going to go down to the car and I'm going to make sure that I can find a point where uh, there's power running to it only when the car is on unlocked basically um, worst case scenario i think i may have to run a wire down to the uh, center usb port that's the one i know is on and it turns off around about a minute after you've locked the car uh, i'm sure there's probably an easier way you find it somewhere in the fuse box maybe but i'm not going to go in on that route i'm going to go with the route i know um, it'd be nice if i could use the interior lights because obviously that's right next to the panoramic sunroof um, 
but I don't know if that live does cancel itself because there's that old, that well-known thing of leaving your interior lights on overnight and waking up in the morning to a flat battery, isn't there? So yeah, so yeah, I'm gonna go do that now. Um, so there'll be a little jump cut and it'll be me and I'll have a plan hopefully. So yeah, back in a sec. Right, so great news, just been down to the car. Um, first of all, we can use the interior light plug. Um, now there are three wires going through your interior light at the front this is. You've got a red, a black and a purple, okay? Um, if you use the black for your negative obviously and the purple for your positive, that is on all the time as long as the car is unlocked uh, and running, uh, or just unlocked. Uh, and then when you lock the car, it stays on for about five to 10 seconds and then goes off, which is absolutely perfect for what we want. Um, the second thing that I've found is brilliant. Um, I'm, I don't think I'm gonna need this because um, the, the piece, so the light comes out this side here, is, you know, it's quite thick. Um, and I can tuck it up into the uh, panoramic roof. Uh, I think it's like a, I don't know, like a seal. You maybe just like to keep draft out, I don't know, but there's a rubber seal that sort of sits, your window's like, your panoramic roof's like that, and there's a rubber seal that just sort of sits like that. And you can sort of push it down and fit the light in this gap. Which is brilliant, so that saves a bit of faffing around with the sticky side of things. Um, you may have to do it, I don't know, it'll be one of those that when it's done, does it look a bit bonky and wobbly? If it looks a bit, you know, wavy, it'll be a bit rubbish. Um, so yeah, there's your update. Um, I've just measured it. Um, this is what I'm going to choose to do because, um, as you may know, the, the back of the panoramic roof and the front of the panoramic roof, they're tucked away, you know, behind the, uh, the blind and the roof lining. I'm going to have the strip as you know, tucked into as far into the back and as tucked into as far into the front so it looks like one continuous piece. You can't see the end as such. I'm only going to do the two sides, I think. I did play with the idea of doing the sides and the front. I don't see a point in doing the rear because um, the, the roof blind, um, it sort of sits, it protrudes out a bit. So, the you know, it would sit like that and your light would be back here. So it just wouldn't look very good. Thought about doing the front, I'm still not sure. See how much excess I've got left. Um, it looks like I'm gonna have quite a bit of excess to be fair. Um, so I've measured it at 112 centimeters of light, lighting uh, strip. So I've put a little mark on it just here. Just use the, uh, a, a rusty tool just to put a mark on that line. So that is going to be the length of the uh, sunroof. So I'm gonna to need to do two that are that length. Uh, I might just cut two off and wire it all myself um, because I did notice I think there's a slight uh, dim patch near the start when I was playing with the wiring. Maybe I did that, I don't know. So I'm going to actually cut two 112 centimeter pieces off from the end of it. Um, so that's what I'm going to get on with now. So this is the plan. We've got our panoramic sunroof. Okay, and at the front, we've got our interior light, which has got our positive and negatives that we need. We're going to have one strip down this side, one strip down that side. Now, my plan, I'm going to, so this is the back of the car. So the car is facing that's forwards. I'm going to connect the two um, side lights behind the back of the uh, panoramic roof. I'm going to make a just get some wiring and solder some wire onto each end. I've just cut them uh, as it said in the instructions, quite rightly. When you cut them at the exact points, which are these black little notches, you can see, hopefully, if it will focus, the two contacts that are in there. And I just need to apparently trim a little bit back on there and then I'll solder the wire onto the two contacts there. So, yeah, again, that's why it's important probably to uh, have lengths that are a little bit too long because then you've got that room to um, cut back and put your own wiring on. So yeah, that's going to be like that. Um, I've got loads left. I've got probably about three meters left. Um, so I'm still toying with doing the front because what I could do, so this is going to be the, the wiring connecting the two at the back. I could have the one at the front and make a loop. So this would be the wiring here, and then the final bit, let's say here, is what would go to the 
two contacts so it would like be a big big sort of spiral um mm. it's tempting <laughs> you know what i'm going to give it a go i've got loads to play with if it goes wrong it goes wrong so my next step i'm going to start recording what i'm doing now because i've, I've realized I've, I've cut them and i've not actually shown you me cutting them but it's pretty simple uh, the next thing i'm going to start uh, getting the wiring together so i'm going to get this length of wiring here um, and cut back the bits on the strips and do a bit, little bit of soldering. So, right, cutting time. Just a little one just to have practice off camera, if you'll focus. Uh, and you can see we've got the two contacts there. I've also unearthed the, one of the uh, SMDs on there. But anyway, uh, this is going to be the end of the loop that I'm going to make because this is the bit that had the cap on in this factory. I mean, I could pull it off, but this will be the end. So this will be uh, the back. Uh, sorry, there'll be at the front uh, on the driver's side above the driver and then it will run all the way around and this will be at the back above the rear driver's side passenger. So we need to do the other cutting because we have some wire from here onto this one. So put this one out of the way. And the way to cut it is just what it says on the instructions. So I've got a sharp knife, chopping board so I don't get shouted at by the missus for destroying the worktop. And then we just need to find where these contacts are is you can just see them just in there one two as you'd cut about like i don't know about a centimeter or so into it and try and do this whilst on camera it's just not gonna be easy so i go about there and we're just cutting down to the same level where those contacts are and then i'm going to put the knife in to the side and just down to meet where I've cut the top on one side on the other side and if I've done it right which I haven't quite should be able to pop this bit off cheat Just use the scissors to get that end off brilliant scissors and there we go so that's what we're aiming to do just by doing that we've now unearthed our two little contacts just there so to run down and do the same on the end of this one as well so yeah, what I'm going to do now, guys, save you just staring at me doing this. I'm going to jump cut to the point where all the cutting's done. So that's the uh, cutting done. So we've got one piece with two pieces cut on the end, because that is going to be, one end is going to go to the connection from the car, the other end is going to swing round and join on to our other piece, which, like I said, this is the very end of the wire. So we're going to keep the cap on one end, and on the other end, we've got our open contacts. So. I've just been down to the car to measure a piece of wire that's going to run between the two. This is this bit here. Uh, that's going to run, like I say, between the two and to just connect them up a bit tidier rather than having two wires go into one plug at the front. Um, and the front part is not going to be doable because that same seal that I'm going to put the side bits into isn't there on the front and it's also tucked away a bit so it could look a bit messy. I'm just going to leave it. Um, one for ease and two like I say it's going to be messy so yeah that's the plan so I'm going to have a lot spare so it might be a giveaway it might be October's giveaway is the remain the remnants of what I've got left because genuinely I've got loads loads of it here uh, so yeah you know what that might be October's giveaway it sounds a bit bad because I'm just giving you stuff I don't need but equally if someone wants to do this job there's some stuff there because I don't have any other use for it so yeah, the next thing we're going to do, you're going to see a nice little uh, sped up version of me being rubbish at soldering, because I did soldering at school and I've never really mastered it there, so I'm going to give it a go. So yeah, we're going to get these wire, this new wire, we're going to solder it onto two of the contacts, and yeah, that'll be the next bit. After that, put a bit of wire on one of the ends, and that wire is what's going to go to the uh, interior light, and at that point we will be ready to go down to the car. And that'll be the first time you see the car in this video. This has been the, probably the longest video without seeing my cash guy. But yeah, we're going to get onto the car and we'll get it in. And it should literally be plug in and play. Fingers crossed. So yeah, let's do a bit of rubbish soldering now.
Okay, so just a little explainer for you then. You don't have to tell me. I know I'm terrible at soldering, but I've done my best. So we've got the end of the wire here. That's what's going to go to our uh, interior light part. Go down to here. I was using this, by the way, just to hold it in, hold it in place while uh, I was soldering on it. So the solder goes to that part, which then is that one side. And that comes all the way to here. Which then solders on some more wire. And that goes on to the next part, the middle side. Bit of a mess, ignore this. Cards, etc. Right, so yeah, that's that bit done. Um, next up, it's time to go down to the car and see how this goes. Just a quick pointer, actually, obviously. Uh, make sure you have the same wire to each. That pretty much makes sense. So I've used some wire here that's got a black stripe on one side and just white on the other. The black stripe is the one that has the white backing to it and the white is the blue side. That's just the way I've decided to do it, but obviously throughout the whole line, the whole circuit, make sure your wires are to the same part, otherwise it might not work. Right, so we're done with the car now. Um, first thing I'm going to do is test that my soldering actually worked, because you never know. Might not have done a good job of it. So this is what I was saying about we're going to use for our wiring. Just move some stuff out of the way so I can get to it right. Uh, I've used these brilliant connectors, and I can never remember the name of them, but basically they do a really good job of splicing into your existing wiring without doing too much damage. Um, I will find out the cord and I'll put a link to them in the description because they're well worth having in for any electrical project. Pardon me. As you can see, we've got a one onto the purple wire, like I said, and just in the middle there is one to the black wire and nothing on the red. Pardon me. So what I'm now going to do is get the end of my wiring which is here. I'm going to do all this on a separate uh, video shoot. Uh, we're going to plug them into there and we're going to hopefully see that it all lights up and everything works great. So as you saw that worked fine which is great. Now we're going to start feeding it to where I'm going to have it in the end. Now I can explain to you exactly where we're going to have it. Now obviously there's your blind that I've got open at the moment and that runs along this channel here so we can't have anything in this channel because that will stop your blind opening and closing. Above it though we have this gap here and here, it's hard to show you exactly because of the window, is this rubber seal which is perfect size to quite simply shove uh, the lights in on each side and as you can see at the front there isn't that seal so you can see it goes on there and then disappears so that's why we're not having it at the front i'm just going to have it at the two sides uh, so now i'm going to get it all into position and the wires of the wiring connecting the two is going to go up behind there out of sight so that's what i'm going to do now and try and record me doing it which will be interesting I forgot to mention I've put some tape on the uh, over the contacts where I've soldered on just to keep them protected. Uh, so now I've got to the point where we're at the front where we need to get the wire to here. Now it's hard for me to show you, I think, but just down there is a gap between the rubber seal and the roof. Uh, you can actually feed your wire down there so it shouldn't get trapped by the blind closing. Uh, we're going to try and feed it <coughs> and run it along here, it's gone dark now because I'm looking out the window, along here and two in here obviously I want it to poke out in here so I can connect it up. That's now what I'm going to do.
so we're there. I am really happy with that. Here it is. Obviously, it will look a lot different at night time. Well, I've got blue head. But there we go, it's looking smart. Um, just to prove that the uh, cover still closes absolutely fine, and when it's closed, it covers them up. So I suppose long journeys, you've got a kid in the back, the kid's tired, wants to sleep, they're not going to get the glare of the lights on them. Um, obviously they're still on right now above the uh, thing, so that'd be interesting how it looks from the outside at night. <laughs> but yeah, um, open it as well, absolutely fine. There we go. And just to prove, put the key in my pocket, I've got the key in my pocket. Uh, I don't know how this will work. I'll lock it from the inside, does that power go off eventually? I'm not sure if it's the same when someone's sat inside. No, so what I'm going to do, unlock it. Uh, I'm going to get out and I'm going to show you how you turn off. See them inside, I don't know. Yep, you can do some lock up. And they've turned off. So it's about what, five to ten seconds. Unlock the car and they turn on. So there we have it guys. That was actually a nice little not little really, it's a bit in depth. A bit of electrical knowledge needed. Um, and the balls to take things apart and cut wires and stuff but yeah that's good so yeah in a sec you'll get to see it what it looks like at night time which i shall record tomorrow morning because i'm at work at half past three in the morning Oops. um but you'll get to see that um and that's it for this video guys thanks ever so much for watching all this stuff that i've used the there'll be links of in the description um if you could drop a like on the video and subscribe if you're not already subscribed to me that would be brilliant and i will see you in the next video So you may have just noticed that they are very bright and they're probably too bright. In fact, they are too bright. I think um, if a police officer saw you driving wrong with those on, it might be interesting pulling you over or something like that. Um, they're dazzling. It's kind of like having your interior lights on all the time, so it's too much. So it's easy to sort out. All we need is a dimmer. Uh, now I've purchased this one here, and this is actually, as it says on it, a Wi-Fi dimmer. So I'll be able to connect to it from my phone. So I'll be able to, hopefully, I've not double checked yet. This is before I've even tried everything. I'll hopefully be able to connect to it with my phone. I'll even be able to turn it off and increase and decrease the brightness. So that's that side of it. Um, it comes with these um, DC style plugs again. And to make my life easier, I've also bought some of these. If I just open them up, what these are, are um, the plugs that we need for the DC ends of the, uh, of the plugs, of the cables, whatever you want to say. But they also have two terminals on them. So it makes things a lot easier to get into the bag. So we have five male and five female. So I get one of each out. One female, one male. So yeah, this is them here. So it's got the right plug on the end. So we get our Wi-Fi switch. So there's the female end of the Wi-Fi switch. It'll plug in like so. And then the same on the male end. It'll plug in like so. And it has two screws with the terminals in there. So all we're gonna have to do is plug in our red and black wire to one end. It'll go through the dimmer switch and then the red and black wire or the white and black the white and white and black wire that we fitted from the lights themselves into the other end and it'll be as simple as that um, the thing you do need to make sure you take note of is the input and output which is quite small to see um, i don't know if it's going to focus very well uh, but it does say here input in red and on the opposite side output so the input so this side is going to be to the interior light connection that we've made and the output is obviously the output is our lights, so that's this end. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do is go down to the car, get all this fitted in, do sort of a fast forward video of me doing it because it's nothing too exciting, it's just gonna be unscrewing and screwing the wires in. And then I'll give you a little tour of exactly what I've done. And then hopefully we'll be done, touch wood, and I'll be able to show you one final video of how the car looks at night or in the dark with it on its lowest dim settings. Uh, I'll also give you a little demo through what the app allows you to do too. So yeah, down to the car.
So I've just had to add a couple of wires uh, to this one here, uh, the male end of it, because uh, that's going to tap into our connectors up here. So, I'll try and get it to a point where you can see it all right because of the light, but you have got it connected. We've used our uh, male and female adapters here, nice and easy to do. And you can see at the moment the light is blinking because this is like, uh, it's in pairing mode. So it's telling us that the uh, Wi-Fi switch is in pairing mode because we need to pair it to our device or to our Wi-Fi network for it to work. So that's why it's flashing. Um, but yeah, pretty simple. Um, I'm hoping I'll be able to get it all away up into that space up there. We've got a bit of space over here uh, it's kind of hard for you to see because of the light but uh, yeah down here we've got quite a bit of room uh, similar on the other side and um, this does come with an, adhes an adhesive pad as well uh, which i might be tempted to try and put it somewhere to stop any rattling uh, but yes yeah, so i'm just going to have a quick tidy up now and then we'll get on to getting this paired and i'll show you exactly how the phone app works so i'm afraid you have to bear with me a bit here guys um i'm recording my current phone with my old phone <laughs> um, just so you can see it working uh, with the app and I can show you the lights working in real time so the lights are installed and they are on and the app is installed now the app that you need is all the instructions come with that dimmer switch so don't worry too much about making note of all this uh, it's just to give you an idea of um, exactly how it works so the app is called magic home there we go uh, now once you install it you do need to register for an account like most of these things um, and then once you've done that as long as your lights are in pairing mode or your, your dimmer switch is in pairing mode which is where we saw the lights flashing um, you'll be able to find them it takes about a minute to connect to it and get all registered once that's done it gives you the option to give it a name so you can see just here I've called mine Kashkai roof lights and then that's it you are linked to those lights or you're linked to the dimmer switch um, and as you can see in the reflection just there they're on so from this screen you can do quite simply just turn them on and off with this button just here so if i hit that you see in the reflection just there they've turned off like so and then you can also turn them back on with that button just there you can see they've turned on if you tap on the actual um, lights themselves you get this menu here now this is a basically this is your dimmer so you can see dark and light underneath you've got off and on basically so the darkest and the brightest and then this is just the wheel so you can see at the top it's currently 100 percent and then wherever you touch on this wheel look you can see it going right down and you can see in the uh, reflection just up here as you let go it will go to that so 75 23 and so on so it's quite decent uh, i think what i'm going to try because i can't get an idea until it's pitch black i'm going to have it on 10 percent which is that a closer look so that's what I'm going to go with for now and when I go to work at four in the morning I'll get another video and we'll get an idea of exactly how this looks. But yeah this app's pretty simple to use. Don't worry you don't always have to be within your Wi-Fi. As you can see I've tested it I've actually turned my Wi-Fi off. You can see I'm running on my if it focuses, mobile data. Um, the only thing that apparently doesn't work if you're not on your Wi-Fi is music reaction and stuff like that, which I don't believe this switch nor these lights have the ability to do. I'm not bothered. I just want them to be adjustable. So that's it. I'll ignore up here. I think you can put them on a timer, but I think that's more designed for your home lights, perhaps, if you want them as a sort of a deterrent to come on at night. Ignore all that. So it's just mainly this menu here to choose what brightness you want it on and also you can turn it on and off from here just to note it also does save the last state so if i i mean i have tested this i won't show you this but if i get out now lock the car they'll go off after about 10 seconds i'll lock the car get in they will be on 10 percent. they won't go back to 100 which is quite nice and useful but that is it for now guys so yeah the next video you'll see is how they look in the dark and that will be the end of this video the end of this project um, I'll turn the camera around now and have a little chat with you. So that's it then. Um, a nice mod that. Um, I'm really happy with it because it's above my head. Uh, relatively simple if you don't mind a bit of a, you know, a bit of work, a bit of wiring, 
um, a bit of purchasing, you know, so I had to buy the lights, I had to buy the dimmer switch and those um, little connections, the male and female, all of which, don't worry, there is a link below. Um, that link is an affiliate link, so if you do purchase through that link, it helps me out as well. I get a little bit of credit from Amazon that I can use for future purchases. Um, but yeah, nice mod. Again, thanks so much to Dave for the idea, for reminding me of it. Um, I do believe that this stuff is available in different colours. So um, if the link I've put below, I'm hoping that that page, if I remember rightly, it did have multiple colour options. If not, just have a look around on Amazon. Um, there should be others available because you might want to go for orange to match the rest of the, uh, the in-car ambient lighting. You've obviously got the orange around the gear stick and all of your buttons on the dash are orange too. But yeah, as usual guys, thank you ever so much for watching. Thank you again to Dave for the idea. And I shall see you in the next video. Please do consider subscribing and liking the video helps a lot. See you soon.